our children's pastor here at Fellowship Church, Pastor Mike Johnson, mm -hmm. is uh, actually in Orlando right now yes. speaking at a children's conference. And and we have Mike live now. Mike, how hey, you Mike. doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Can you guys hear me? Are we live with Mike? Everybody? I'm here. I'm here. Mike, it's great me? to see you. You know, um, Mike is down at this conference, and this is for children's pastors, and he's there uh, really letting them ears. know about what's going on uh, down there. Uh, so he's he's letting them know about Elevate. This is a great curriculum we have, and so um, I'm going to get all hooked up here so we can start listening to what Mike has to say. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I'm here. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great. What are you, you doing there in Orlando? Uh, well, enjoying the uh, sunshine and... Yesterday, I think you got up into the uh, low 80s, so I've been thinking about you guys, and uh, it looks like it's not 80s there, though. No. You know, Mike, right now, it's not too bad. Uh, this it? morning, it was Good. about 24 degrees, oh, and uh, it's, it's warm up, but now the temperatures are starting to drop as the sun sets. So I think we're looking at like 34 tonight. So it's not it's not too bad. Not too hey Curtis, can you come over and help Tian and make sure she's <laughs> she's got some some ears here? She's got her mittens too big there. Yeah. So Mike, you've been in Orlando uh, speaking at a conference at a at a children's yeah. conference. Uh, yeah, that's a children's pastors conference. Okay, and I see a sign behind you that says Elevate. Tell us a little bit yes. about Elevate and all that's going on with that. Yeah, absolutely. You know we've got. Uh, a lot of great things that are happening with Elevate right now. We just launched uh, a couple of weekends, in fact, over the holidays, a website called Elevate at Home. That's elevatedhome.com. And the whole site is dedicated to building leadership into kids. And it's been a heartbeat of mine for quite some time as I look across the landscape of not just the United States, but really across the world. Uh, there's just not a lot out there, secular uh, or religious, that deals with building leadership into kids. And the thing is, is research, uh, research that I've done, research that I've read shows that uh, the majority of our morals and values are formed within us by the time we turn age 13. Wow. I mean, there's no, there's no other time in life uh, like the first 13 years of life. We're just like sponges. Well, Mike, considering the topic of, of the sex experiment, mm -hmm. I mean, We've had many people calling in, asking or uh, texting in questions in, uh, on Facebook about how do they tell their kids and when is it appropriate and, and, and all those things. So, Mike, I know uh, what you deal with and the age range from mm -hmm. what really birth, birth all the way to fifth grade. And yeah, you've actually absolutely. got two girls right now. How old are your, how old are your girls? Man, Annie is uh, 14. And Caitlin just turned 17. Wow. And they've yeah. grown up in this, you in know, really learning. That's right. And they're serving and, 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 and yeah. highly involved. But, you know, you're talking and, you know, about. I, I could I, go ahead. I, or I can really testify to the fact of just as a father, you know, when Ed did the, the sex experiment or the uh, seven days of sex series, what was that now? 18 months, two years ago? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Um, you know, it was so cool to sit. Uh, in the in the audience with Carrie, my wife, with Caitlin, with Annie, and for them to hear, I mean, they they love and respect Ed and Lisa so much, and for them to be able to sit in church and hear uh, about sex in uh, the way that God designed it between one man, one woman, that it's not something you need to be ashamed of, it's not something dirty, it's something that's, that, that God wants to be a part of. I mean, you can't, there's no way that you could pay for something like that. I know when I was a kid, that I would have, I would have loved to have had that information told to me, you know, from the church. And okay. so it's, it's really good. Go ahead. Okay, so when you were saying that and you're painting that picture of sitting there in the audience with your girls, I'm remembering what it was like when I was a teenage girl. I didn't even want to talk to my parents about boys at all, you know? <laughs> and so I'm imagining for them how uncomfortable that may have been sitting, knowing not only they're hearing this, but they're sitting next to you while they're hearing this. So, like, yeah. how did you talk to them afterwards to really kind of use it as a stepping off point? Well, you, we really talked to them a lot uh, beforehand That's great. Uh, as well as afterhand. And I don't, you know, I don't really think that it was awkward for them um, because of the way it was presented in the worship center. It was like, why would we be awkward about something like that? Now, sure, obviously, it's we're mom and dad, and that's something they probably don't want to think about. <laughs> but, you know, when, 
it's all, but all of our is, worst is, nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> la, 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 you know, la, I think, la. I think that a key, though, in there is something you just said, Mike, is that y'all had already talked about it before. So they were yes. used to already having conversations about you. So it wasn't like this was the first time yeah. we've ever even used the word in, within and, the company of and, our parents. Yeah. And let's rewind Amen. a little yeah. bit on just not even just the topic of sex for a second, but... Mike, what kind of advice could you give just parents, new parents, just in general about raising kids God's way? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I mean, um, there's so much that are facing our kids today, you know, from the outside world. And as we know, um, <clears throat> the stuff that is our kids are being bombarded with is getting younger and younger with our kids. And, you know, I think obviously first and foremost, you got to find yourself a great church and you got to orbit your life around that church and not just orbit your life. And what I mean when I say orbit your life around that church, but what that means is be there as often as you can. You need to be there every week. It needs to be the highest priority, but then not just do that, but also begin to serve in the church. And when you orbit your life around church, it alters how you talk about uh, different things to your kids. It opens up avenues, but not just for you, now you have a whole family of people That's that right. are uh, in building into your kids. So the, the greatest advice that I give to parents, new parents, is from the very beginning. Orbit your life around the church. Make sure that you're serving, modeling that for the kids. Because I've been at Fellowship now for 19 years. I've seen a lot of families come and go. And what I tell new parents, I said the greatest potential for you to have success with your kids is for you to orbit your life around the church and serve. And then, obviously, when the kids get old enough, uh, sixth, seventh grade, to get them serving as well. And I've never seen a kid go south uh, and do anything, um, you know, disappointing to the parents or, or what we would say would be off off the charts uh, as far as behavior uh, when a family does that. Because you're, set, you're, you're setting all the right priorities. That's great. You know, let's talk very practically about how do you talk to your kids about sex. And, you know, we've uh, heard Ed and Lisa saying today, this starts at birth. I mean, the, 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 you're c can beginning to give them uh, information and modeling things for them from a young age. So let's just start, uh, Mike, if you would, kind of for parents that have little ones, maybe preschoolers, kindergarten, what are the kind of things they can be communicating to them right now to start laying a solid foundation? And, and, and then in that, also ask, we need to put you on the spot a little bit, Mike, but <laughs> yeah, what, you are. what wow. age? Like, you know, but what age do we even start? Have, yeah. Like, is there like, hey, if you miss it by this age, you're you're in trouble? Or, you know, what no. do you think as far as the culture and what, what, what the culture is sure. throwing at us? Well, first and foremost, Yann, you know, People say that as parents, uh, our actions speak louder than our words. And I, I think as much as you possibly can, you need to show affection between each other as a couple. You know, and if, if you don't do that and then all of a sudden you start doing it and the kids are watching, now all of a sudden it's like, ooh. But if they grow up with that, That's if they good. grow up seeing the, the physical touch, the, the putting their arm around, even kissing your wife in front of the kids, then that opens up the door to go, well, you know, that's just what moms and dads do. It's that's not good. weird. It's not creepy. It's just what it is. And Pace, I would say, um, you know, you really need to just listen to the cues of your kids. You need to listen to their conversation, you know, with when they're talking with their friends. What are they talking about? Mm -hmm. And you can really you can really gain a lot of, of great information that way. And if you hear them talking about sexual things and more than likely they don't have any idea what they're talking about, that's great. then that's a good time. Now I would say, you know, kids are very concrete thinkers. They're very literal thinkers. Um, up usually up till about age eight or nine. So that's, that would probably be the, the youngest that I would go into an in-depth talk. Um, I know Carrie, um, I got out of it because I have two <laughs> girls. Uh, Carrie took the reins on it. Um, but both Annie and Caitlin were in fifth grade going into sixth grade. Carrie took them away for a weekend. She had a, a program that she did with them. It was a very special time. And, uh, you know, it worked great for them. You know, how, I, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, how about when your kids ask questions? Look how that, beautiful. I'm sorry, but look how beautiful the sky oh, is Oh, can right you see now. that, Mike? 
We've got a that beautiful sunset behind us. You can see the car uh, lights driving gorgeous. by. Oh, and as there you can we go. see, you can see that traffic on 121 is flying actually quite nicely tonight. Not too bad. Look at that. That's a, look <laughs> that's at the sunset right there. I mean, that's God's that creation. Awesome. God spoke wow. that into existence just by the power of his word. I mean, that's, that's incredible. A, that's awesome. So, so um, you know, what I was saying, Mike, was, um, you know, I yes. think all parents probably at some point have had that time when your kid asks you this question about sex, and it totally takes you off guard. It's just, you know, maybe in the backseat of the car when you're carpooling over you or something. How, how does a parent respond to those questions when they come? Oh, you are putting me on the spot. <laughs> you know, a lot depends on what the question is. You know, a lot of times as kids, they're just, they don't even really, they're not even asking the question as they want an answer. It's just something that they've heard at school. Yes. You know, they have, they have no idea what that means. And you as a parent just have to go, gosh, with the age of my child, with, with the, the spiritual maturity that they have, with the emotional maturity that I have, I don't think that that's an answer that they really need the full answer because they, they would not even understand what, what it means. So it really depends a lot on the question themselves. But, you know, I, I think with dads, um, you know, with sons talking to, uh, about physical things with the male body, um, that can start early. I mean, it's, again, the, the, the main thing you want to do is you want to make sure um, that kids are accustomed to intimacy and relationships and, and early on. And the best way to do that is for the husband and wife to model it. And then, again, every child is different. Um, but if you if you um, overhear your son or your daughter say something and it sounds like, oh, my, she knows what that is or somebody's graphically explained that to her and you don't feel like she's ready to do that or hear about it, then I would just say, you know, sweetheart, that's that's something that uh, I want you to know about. But now is not the time. And, you know, in a couple of years, we're, we're going to go away on a special weekend. We're going to spend some time together and we're going to talk about those things. And if you're, you're at school and you hear kids talking about that, you know, you don't have to make a big deal about it. But you don't need to listen to that because that's not that's not what we would say would be appropriate for you to hear. So, Mike, you would say that, I mean, if you have a healthy, you know, obviously communication and you're attentive to your child, mm -hmm. You should be able to take cue from them yeah, that's good. off of when they're ready to. Right. Now, obviously, yeah. they're not going to tell you everything they're hearing at school. They're going to they're gonna kind of think some of that's taboo to mom and dad. They don't think you know anything about it because you're mom and dad. <laughs> you know, you're not cool enough. You this don't, is all brand new stuff. Uh, it's, it's all brand new, mom. you know. But so you're saying, you know, listen to them, take cues from them. Um, but, I mean, how do you even if it's like out left how do you be, begin to approach it with them let's say let's say you hear through another parent that your son and their son were talking and your son has no idea that you even know that they're talking and thinking about sex how would you even begin to approach that conversation with your child wow so what age, what what age range would you be putting on that let's say they're 10 years old yeah you know, it's kind of time for the old. talk. How do I, I'm coming home from work. How do I even start that thing, you know? Well, you know, I really do think that something like that, um, and, and you're ready to have that talk. There's there's quite a few um, great programs out there, and I wish I could remember off the top of my head what my wife used with, with our daughters. But I wouldn't make it just a casual conversation. I wouldn't make it, well, tonight we're going to do the talk, you know, after dinner. For a half hour, we're going to go to your room, and we're gonna, I'm going to tell you all about it. Um, I do think that it is something sacred. It's something spiritual. Uh, it's something special. And, you know, we celebrate a lot of things with our kids. We celebrate their birthday. We celebrate Christmas. Um, and, and really learning about this wonderful gift that God gave to us, our sexuality, needs to be special too. And so I'm all about doing something out of the ordinary, going away for a couple of days with your son. You know, maybe for a dad and a son, it's out. Uh, out, out in the woods camping or something uh, for a mother and daughter, you know, to go to some sort of a resort or something. Um, but but make it uh, a special thing for the kids. And I think that that will that will ease a lot of tension as well. And don't you know, as you're talking to your child, you, you got to do your best not to get all worked up over it. Yeah, you know, because as a parent, we carry a lot of baggage ourselves in that we don't need to bring into that conversation. So just spend a lot of time in prayer early going, God, just give me the <laughs> words to say 
don't let me look like I'm embarrassed or I'm weirded out about this. Help me to, to really show that, man, this is a beautiful, natural thing. And, you know, let God, God help you with the rest. You know, I think that's so great what you're saying there, Mike, is it's, I think so much of how we respond and the attitude that we have and the, um, our comfort level with it will communicate to our kids. And so it's really important when they come to us with questions or when it's time for that talk that's great. To, yes. to not react, you know, don't panic. Even if on the inside you're panicking, don't panic on the outside, you know, <laughs> but calmly answer, ask questions to find out kind of where they're coming from. But, and that, that continues to keep that door open so that they will continue yes. to feel like they can come back to you. So that's. That's, that's really a great that's, word. That is so good because you know what? You're right. Kids kids feed. They have almost like a sixth sense they do. about mommy and daddy are kind of weirded out about something yes. or mommy and daddy are mad or mommy and daddy are fighting. or And so you do. You got you, you've got to get – you've got to come to grips with the, the whole sexuality thing yourself good. Um, before your kids can really do it because you, you're right. You don't, you don't want them to sense that Bob, mommy was really freaked out about yes. telling me this. What's, yes. what's the deal? That's right. Um, I have another question here because we have uh, in our church here at, at Fellowship Church and in our culture, it's so prominent. Now, we've got so many single parents that are out there, and they are single parents are champions. I mean, they are working so hard for their families, um, you know, working. They've got a job, and they've got kids, and, and they really have so much to carry. And so how do you, how does a single parent, I, I would say, uh, if I can be more specific, how does a single mom broach this with her son and a single dad broached this with his daughter. If they need to have this conversation, maybe the questions are being asked when they're at their house or maybe their spouse isn't willing to have the conversation. How, how do you speak to your child of the opposite sex about this, this topic? Well, I mean, I would, if, if at all possible, what I would do, uh, if there is a grandfather that's somewhere that's in the good. picture uh, or uh, a brother, somebody that the child would know and respect and love as part of the family, um, that, that could assist with that. Um, but if not, I mean, it, there's really no difference between a guy telling his daughter or a lady telling her son. They're, they're going to feed off of the cues that you have. That's good. And, you know, if, if you're not weirded out about it, if you're, you're uh, comfortable in expressing it to them and they sense that, then it, it doesn't matter. Dads doesn't have to do it with their boys and girls don't have to do it with their moms. It can be vice versa, and it can be just as beautiful, just as much of a celebration um, as, as if it was with the same-sex parents. So, yeah. so don't let that freak you out. Again, it's, it's all about how you respond. You know, and, uh, Lisa and I were talking about this earlier, about how a husband and wife come together, and we, we uh, bring complementary qualities um, and I think yeah. the, the same is true here. You know, you've got a, a, a single mom or, or just a mom that's talking to her son. She is bringing some, a unique perspective and um, a unique information to her son. So even if a, even in a marriage where a daughter, a mom is speaking to her daughter, how, it's important that the, the father also be speaking to his daughter. Don't just, don't just push it off to the side because he right. has some really valuable information to be able to bring to that girl uh, that she, yes. she needs to hear. Absolutely. You know, I mean, the, the father plays such a huge role. Uh, in a daughter's life. And, you know, I'm, I'm one that uh, I think physical touch with your daughter, holding their hand, putting your arm around them, you know, that really never has to end. I mean, the, the love and, and, and the affection, just because they get to the, you know, age of puberty and now it, it, that, that's not a time to all of a sudden go, wow, things are kind of awkward. They're different than they were before because our kids sense that, that's good. you know, they, they can come and, and snuggle up to you while they're watching TV, just like they could when they were five years old. And same thing with, with boys, with their moms, you know, sometimes we get freaked out that, and, and unfortunately a lot of that comes from school, you know, that they get the, 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 the idea that parents aren't cool and, you know, moms are cool. Dads aren't cool. And, and I think, you know, if you have that strong relationship with them and you keep that line of communication open, that they're going to respect you, they're going to love you, and uh, showing them emotion, showing them physical touch it, is a good thing. That's great. You know, I, a while back I was reading uh, about this very thing and about how when our kids 
enter puberty, teenage years, oftentimes exactly what you're saying. They don't think we're cool. And they also feel just a little more awkward. And so our tendency is because they feel awkward and we don't want to make them feel more awkward, we back off of that exactly. affection and interaction. And we, exactly we need to, right. even if they act like they don't like it, we still need to reach out to them because they need that. And they need that yeah. affirmation. If, if there's any time they need it, it's when you're a teen. I mean, I remember how awkward I was when I was a teenager and needing that affirmation from your parents. So that's that was really great encouragement. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, uh, did, so did you, did your parents have that talk with you? Yeah, my mom had that talk okay. with me. and I um, But, I, I, you know, something that my father was really good about, um, he didn't have the talk with me, but he really um, affirmed my value and my beauty. He affirmed that, you know, he would he would leave me notes sometimes and tell me, I'm so proud of you, not just because of what you're accomplishing now, but because of who you are. And he would affirm those things. And that was really important because I knew that no matter what, I had one man in my life who yeah. really believed in who I was. So yeah. how about, what do you do with your well, daughter? Uh, my, I mean, she's five years old. You know, like Mike said, we're watching the cues. Uh, I do, uh, you know, my wife is planning on having that conversation. I think we'll probably, um, Sarah will, will do the lion's share of that mm -hmm. conversation. But then we're going to do some of that collectively together yeah. just to show that it's a healthy, it's not taboo and, and that. And um, we know several couples that have done that as well and, 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 has, and has worked you know, well, but, you know, it's a fit for whatever's right for the kid, for the parents. Right. Um, you know, I know for, for many people, uh, Mike, many, many children, their first exposure to, to sex uh, is via the Internet. Mm -hmm. They right. stumble upon a, a porn site. Someone yeah. at school shows them a dirty picture, yeah. a, a, you know, whatever. Um, and, and so kids all of a sudden, I mean, at an early age, I, just parents don't shy away from the topic because right. there's a good That's chance. Good. I mean, there's a good chance that, I mean, if your child is, you know, 8, 10, tw I mean, they are already uh, having conversations at school, That's possibly right. seeing images yep. that you would be oh, yeah. horrified for them to yeah. see. Um, but, but Mike, have you ever had, uh, and I'm sure you had, and if, and if, you know, uh, have you ever had a parent who've said, you know, my, my kid, op you know, stumbled across this website, you know, and this is what they found. Where do I begin with that? What do I talk to him? How do I, you know, how do I begin to, a conversation about that? And then yeah. also what a kind of advice would you give parents in regards to media intake for their children? That's a great question. That's a great question because... Unfortunately, I mean, with wireless access and 3G, 4G on our, our smartphones, and kids are bringing them to school with them, you know, more than likely, your kid is going to see something, and, and what you need to pray and hope is that you find out that they have, because that's some of those early cues in life where we do start to all of a sudden think, yeah, this is, this is, this is different. It's kind of, I don't show it to my teachers. We're doing a recess in the corner, looking at these pictures. Now, all of a sudden, our sexuality has become something to be ashamed of. It's something we hide. It's something that freaks people out if they find out about it. And if I would naturally assume that your kids are probably going to hear or see something like that in school. And I would have an open conversation with them about the human body. You know, that there are people out there that will take pictures of, of men and women who, who don't have their clothes on. And that's not what God wants us to do. God wants, God has given our bodies uh, for us to, to one day share with your, your husband or your wife. Nobody needs to see that except your husband and wife. It's a beautiful thing. It's a present that you're going to give someday for them to be able to see you. Um, and, and, and if you see, you know, if you see somebody at school that sh is showing something like that, you just need to walk away, you know, because that's not something that, that God would, God wants you to see. And it's, it's not something that we want you to see because we don't want it to ruin the gift that you're going to be able to give someday to your wife. That's great. You know, for those husband. who are joining us right now, just yep. to, um, we're so glad that you're joining us on thesexperiment.com. We are in the middle of a 24-hour bed-in, and uh, Ed and Lisa are actually taking comfort break, dinner break right dinner, now. Yeah. Uh, we've been going for over 12 hours now, so they're taking a little break. They're going to be back with us with more interviews. Uh, we've got a date night going on. We've got um, hundreds of couples that are going to be coming to all of our campuses, so we've got a, a lot going on. So we're, right now we're talking to uh, Mike Johnson, who's our um, children's pastor here at Fellowship Church. Yeah, and just about five minutes. Uh, earlier in the day, Pastor Ed and Lisa had a Skype uh, conversation with 
Carl Lentz from Hillsong, New York. Oh, I heard that this and, morning. Uh, it was great. Carl and his wife, it was phenomenal. We're going to re-air that because some of you missed it. And okay. you're just you're now getting home from work. So right at about 6.20, we're going we're gonna to re-air that. But, Mike, I know we're going to, uh, you know, get on the back side of this um, interview. But, uh, again, how can we get – talk to us about Elevate.com. Uh, Elevate. Yeah. Uh, Family. Family.com. Yep. Actually, it's ElevatedHome.com. Elevated We're close. Good night. I have slaughtered it. <laughs> okay, it's been and, a long day. and Mike, oh, we do have your video, it. by the way, if you want to show that. But oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when can you roll that? Whenever you want, you can call for Let's it. Let's do it right now, and then I'll, which I'll, one do you, I'll come out of that. Which one would you like? Why don't you roll the one that I did? Okay, we want to see the vision piece for Elevate. We'll Every child is designed by God to become a leader, to be someone who makes a difference in the world by influencing the lives of others. Knowing this, we've created a leadership development program designed to help your children become influential people by teaching them the leadership principles found in the Bible. And here's the best part. It doesn't take much for you to get your child into the program. Just once a week, go online and download the leadership video for that week and have your kids completed. It's as simple as that. You know, we make our kids do a lot of things. We make them do their homework, eat their vegetables, go to bed on time, even be involved in extracurricular activities. But what are we doing on a regular basis to make them into influential people, into leaders? That's a great question we as parents need to ask ourselves every day. And to help you with a great answer, I encourage you to get plugged into Elevate's leadership program. When you do, you will be putting your children on the path to becoming the leaders God designed them to be. All right, and Mike, we have just, just, about a, just about a minute here, so give us some Im more information. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I really encourage you to go on and check out the site. We have a lot of free stuff on there for you to get a feel for what we're trying to do. Uh, uh, but we really feel a strong conviction at Fellowship Church that the, uh, the next generation uh, needs to be taught leadership principles, but not just leadership principles, leadership principles that flow out of the Bible. And the great thing is, is we serve a God who's given us a book uh, of stories that kids love. And out of those stories come principles um, that they can apply to their lives right now that will ultimately make them into being a leader tomorrow. Incredible. Mike, thank you so much for you joining Good us. Good to see you. And we're just about to go and uh, and and.